Ray, speaking as an old neuroscientist, when we want to talk about consciousness, we talk about the brain and we look for the neuronal, the brain cells, the correlations with consciousness. Uh, is, that a, is that a good thing to do? I doubt we're going to find consciousness is over in this particular region. I think it's really an emergent property of the very complex interaction of lots of, li lots of different areas. We have discovered actually the spindle cells, which are fairly unique in human beings. There are some other uh, primates that have them. I think great apes have four to 8,000. We have 80,000, 80, still a fairly small number. But these are unique cells that span the entire brain and are deeply interconnected. And one spindle cell can sp have hundreds of thousands of connections and interact with dozens of other regions, maybe hundreds of other regions. We're, and those are going to be very hard to reverse engineer until we reverse engineer all the different regions that they communicate with. But they do seem to light up in brain studies when somebody's looking at a loved one or dealing with some emotional subject. So they have something to do with human emotion. But human emotion is, is part of what the brain does. And generally, when we talk about consciousness, people are talking about feelings, which have to do with emotion. Mm -hmm. And you know, fundamentally, I think consciousness is a philosophical issue. It's not really something we could scientifically determine and have an entity and have some kind of test that we definitively say this is conscious and this is not. But there is apparent consciousness, certain types of behaviors that where we say that this human being is conscious. And that really is, gonna, is I believe, an emergent property of the complex interaction of, of all the different regions. Uh, it's not, we're not going to find one center of consciousness. Okay, so we had the brain doing this. Uh, now, many scientists today, particularly computer scientists, not, no, not so much neuroscientists, are, talk about maybe in the near future we'll be able to upload the totality of our being, our knowledge, but even our, our essence, into a non-biological system. Uh, do you think this is really possible? Well, what's going to actually come first, which I think is actually easier, is to create a non-biological entity that achieves human levels of intelligence and emotional reaction that passes the so-called Turing test that appears indistinguishable from human intelligence. But it's not an upload of you or me or a specific right. person. But it does have a personality, and it, it is indistinguishable from some human being. And we can't tell it apart from an, from an actual biological human. And I think actually a key to a computer passing a Turing test is it needs to dumb itself down because if it seems too knowledgeable, <laughs> which will be very easy for it to do, it'll, it won't be indistinguishable. But copying a specific human is a lot harder because if you wanted to upload me, you'd have to capture <coughs> every detail of my personality and knowledge and skills and memories. Uh, we'll get to a point, I think a little bit after a computer passing the Turing test, which I believe is 2029, where a computer could learn enough about me, and we could, we could scan my brain from inside, sending scanners through the bloodstream, billions of them in the form of nanorobots or nanobots, and capture every detail of my synapses and neurotransmitters, <coughs> and create a virtual Ray Kurzweil in a very powerful computer. And it would be indistinguishable from me. It would pass a Ray Kurzweil <laughs> Turing test. Now, is that the same person as me? Well, I could still be here. You could come to me in the morning and say, oh, good news, Ray. We've scanned your brain. We don't need your old brain anymore. The new one's actually better. And I may say, well, that's great. I wish the new Ray Kurzweil well, but I'm still here. And I may not agree with that perspective. That's a different person, even if he seems to have the same personality and memories that I do. And could fool anybody, your loved ones, your wife, your kids, would just assume that is you right. as, w as much as you So, so I think we will be able to capture all the details up to a certain level of precision, and that level of precision will keep advancing to the point where it's absolutely indistinguishable, even at the very you know, microscopic level. So you could recreate an entity that's, even if you looked inside of it, its simulated brain would be processing information just the way I do. Yeah, it's, it's a, look, you've shown how information is doubling exponentially and the enormous power that will give. So let's go to the, 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 the end point, yeah. which is that, that we can model every single atom, every single molecule with a three-dimensional structure in your entire brain. Yeah, I don't think you have to go that far, I mean, because there's not that, nearly that much complexity actually in the human brain. Things are stored 
in, in a much clearer sure, fashion. Than sure, that. but just I'm, I'm taking it to the end point. I want to say once we get there, because e e with the amount of computing power that we will have that you've shown, uh, to get to that end point might be another hundred years, but it won't. Uh, in principle, we can do it. So wherever you need to be, you'll be there. What do we got when we're there? Well, you get some philosophical quandaries because <laughs> you could create a copy of me and I could still be here. Right. And so is that the same entity as me? Well, since I might not even know that you've scanned my brain and you come to me and say, well, we got this, this scan and recreation. We don't need you anymore. But uh, I don't even know that that exists. It doesn't really affect my consciousness. I'm still here. I would prefer not to be extinguished just because there's a copy of me. Uh, so that's actually an argument that that's different for me. And obviously, its experiences will diverge instantly from, you know, from that moment. Uh, on the other hand, uh, w you know, what constitutes me, even as a biological person, I'm different stuff than I was just a few months ago. Our cells die and are recreated. Sure. The neurons don't die, but the portions of them are actually replaced pretty quickly. I'm completely different particles and, and than I was six months ago. What has continuity? Well, what has continuity is the pattern. I, I make the, the metaphor of water in a stream. You say it's the same stream, it's the same pattern, but the water changes in a few milliseconds. So the only thing that has con continuity is the pattern that the water makes as it goes around a rock. And that pattern can stay the same for years. Maybe it changes slowly. It's just like we, we change slowly, but we have continuity, but the particles sort of flow through us. That's an argument that what, what I am principally is not this material stuff, but a pattern of information. Well, then, if the pattern is the essence, and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need, then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me. And if you imagine doing it gradually, let's say you replace, a, this is a slippery slope argument, you replace a portion of my brain with a little computer that does the same thing. At the end of that operation, hey, I'm still here, yeah. feels fine. Start with one neuron. <laughs> well, people actually do this with Parkinson's disease. They yeah. lose the region of the brain, they get it replaced with a computer, they feel better than they did before, and it's still the same person. You keep doing that, and bit by bit, finally you end up with a machine, but <laughs> at, at no point did you ever seem to lose the person. You don't have the old person, new person, it's always the same person. Did we lose the old person somewhere along the line? It's actually equivalent to, to copying my brain, ca creating a machine replica, and then coming and extinguishing me. It's exactly the same process as doing this gradually, yet the second way of describing it, you're actually extinguishing a person. So if you do it gradually, is there an ex extinguishment of the old person at some point? This is a fu really fundamental philosophical question. And if question. you say yes, then you'd have to say the same thing happens naturally because right. we are, in fact, changing who we are constantly in terms of material particles. So. There's a lot, there's really no philosophical position that you can't then find some inconsistencies with, which is really, I think, one of the reasons that consciousness is such a fascinating subject. And again, if we could upload and it works once, you could duplicate it I an sure. infinite number of times. Yeah, you create and So the whole world would be Ray Kurzweil's. So I think, you know, one is probably pretty much sufficient for, for this it's planet. It's enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it's a real issue. It's a real issue, and it, and it reflects very dramatically on what consciousness is. And Certainly the, the subjective consciousness that we all feel. And not, and not only that, I think we actually will become principally non-biological, not just through uploading, but the fact that we're, we're going to introduce non-biological intelligence into our bodies and brains. That's already started. There are people with computers in their brains. The latest generation allows you to download new software to the computer in your brain if you're a Parkinson's patient, for example. Uh, there's already experiments with putting blood cell size devices in animals that can go inside their bodies and find cancer cells and destroy them or release I insulin, perform therapeutic functions, do diagnostic tests. If you go out 25 years from now, we will have billions of these nanobots inside our bodies and brains keeping us healthy. On the one hand, going inside our brains through the capillaries non-invasively, interacting with our biological neurons and expanding our memories, our pattern recognition, our cognitive faculties. So then we are part biological and part non-biological. Now you apply this, what I call law of accelerating returns. The non-biological portion is growing exponentially, not because it's self-replicating, but that's just because that's the nature of information technology. Our biological intelligence is fixed. Go out a few decades from now, and the non-biological portion of our brains is going to be 
a thousand times, then a million times, and eventually a billion times more powerful than the biological portion. At that point, the non-biological portion is pretty trivial. <laughs> and so, talk about uploading, well then it's easy because we know we can take <laughs> computer software and systems and copy those you know, without having to do exotic scanning because the information is inherently capturable. Yeah, but that still doesn't address, and maybe it's not addressable in principle, the question of, of our subjective internal experience of, of what it's like to be me, the self-conscious awareness. Yeah, well suppose I put a computer in my brain, I don't replace anything, I just add it, maybe I send it in a blood cell size device into my brain and, and I send millions of these and so now I have a better memory, I can do direct Google searches <laughs> uh, right in my brain, I can communicate on the web through my brain, I can think more quickly and if you do the, if you analyze the amount of computation in my brain, you'd see that maybe more of it is actually in these computerized processes in my biological brain. Some people would say, yeah, but your consciousness, that's in the biological neurons. And this is all the computers in your brain, that's just, just the same principally as the computers you now have in your pocket. You just put them in your brain, it's a convenient place to put them, but that's not really you. Yeah. But that doesn't really work. I mean, I've actually asked people with a Parkinson's implant, is that implant part of you? And yes, it's as much of them as the biological neurons were before they were destroyed that this computer now replaces inside their brain. And, uh, and so I think it will be part of us. And it will be an emergent property of biology and non-biological non systems working together. And then, but the next step in the argument is that those non-biological systems, they ultimately become where the action is because they're some, they'll become so much more capable. And they'll get to a point where they can easily, trivially simulate everything going on in the biological portion. You don't really need the <laughs> biological portion.